Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name is John Finch. Today we're going to be looking at making one of the simplest developers, but one of the best. I use it in the darkroom all the time. It only has two constituents and you don't need scales to make it. All you need is a set of these. And the developer we're going to make is D23. D23 is a beautiful developer. It works with any film and I use it in the darkroom all the time. We're going to see more of D23 in later videos. Today we're going to make it with our teaspoons. So we're going to need Metol, easily bought at a photographic chemistry online store. Sodium sulfite anhydrous. This is a common chemical used in a lot of industries, uh, easy to get hold of. They're the only two chemicals we need for D23. I'll also need a measuring jug that measures accurately to a thousand cc's or milliliters and a stirrer. This is a chemical stirrer that I bought online. It has a flat end so I can crush and pulverize the crystals to help them break down into the solution. I'll put that there. I'll also need a knife and my measuring spoons. Now, if you're going to use a knife that can be mixed up with any kitchen utensils, Make sure you mark it clearly so that you're not going to use this for food. Even my teaspoon measurements are marked so that I don't mix them up with food ones. I'm lucky here, my darkroom isn't in the house, so I'm well away from the kitchen. However, we have to take safety in, in mind here in case somebody else picks them up and decides to use them. Now, my teaspoon measurements are a tablespoon, a teaspoon, half a teaspoon and quarter of a teaspoon. You're going to need those ones. I bought these from a second-hand shop for one pound. Should be easy for you to get hold of. Let's look at making it now. First of all, we're going to measure the meat hole. And the, in the meat hole, we need two and three quarter teaspoons. So we're going to use level teaspoons. This is my teaspoon measurement from my set. And I'm gonna very carefully level these teaspoons. Now, some people have allergies to metal. If you have any allergies, you're probably best to use gloves. I don't have any allergy to metal, so I'm fine with that. One, here's my second one. I see I'm leveling the teaspoon. Two, and three quarters. So I'm gonna use my half and my quarter. Here's my half going in. Nice and level. And my quarter. Now, the thing is about making any developers or concentrates in the darkroom is if you use the same technique every single time, you're going to get the same results. So this might not be exactly the right measurements for D23 but they're so close, and as long as I do it the same every time, they're going to give me the same results, and I'm going to be able to develop films the same way every time. Okay, so there's my metal. Sodium sulfite, I need four tablespoons plus one teaspoon. Now, notice I have not dissolved my chemicals yet in the water. We're going to come to that, because there's a system for doing that. So here we are, we're measuring this out now. Nice level tablespoon, one, two, three, here's the fourth one. And then we're going to need one teaspoon more. Be careful to keep them all on the paper. And my teaspoon. There we are. So there are my two chemicals measured out. Metal oxidizes very easily, especially when it's in solution. So what we need to do is remove any dissolved oxygen, the stuff the fish breathe with, that's inside this water here. And to do that, we just add a very small amount, a pinch, a, just a pinch of the sodium sulfite. I'm gonna pop that in there dissolve it in. Sodium sulfite is a very powerful antioxidant. So just that first pinch is dissolved already. 
And now I can add my metal. Just put it in carefully like that. Don't create loads of dust. Be gentle. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in. Now here we go, it's going into solution nicely. It's nice and hot water out of the tap. Should be around about 50 degrees. That's the temperature, 50 centigrade, that you're looking for to dissolve your chemicals in. And that goes with just about every set of chemicals you use in the darkroom. There's only one in particular that you never use hot water for, and that's Amidol. But we're not going to use any Amidol in these videos. And even if we did, I'd remind you at the time. Everything else can dissolve in hot water. So the metal is now in solution. It hasn't changed color. If I put the metal in and I'd forgotten to put a pinch of sodium sulfite in, it would change color slightly. So we're good, no color change there. And now I'm carefully picking up the sulfite. And I'm just gonna put it in gently. If you're wondering how much water I'm using here, I've, I've poured in about six, seven hundred milliliters of water to dissolve them in. We usually use about two thirds of the amount of hot water to dissolve our chemicals in, and then we top it up to the one liter mark. So these are going in nicely. This really is a simple developer to make, and it's marvelous. I can't wait to show you results from this. It lasts a long time. It keeps. You can use it in all kinds of ways. We'll cover those in later videos. I'm looking down inside now. A little bit more to dissolve. It's going in nicely. Lovely. There we are. Now, I'll leave that there. I'm just going to fetch some hot water from the tap so that I can top this up. And here we are, and we're going to top this up now to the one liter mark. It doesn't have to be hot water anymore. Stir it up, make sure it's really well stirred up. Now, another tip about making developers or other chemistry in the darkroom, it's always best to make it the day before you're going to use it. Because over the next 24 hours, this chemistry is going to permeate throughout the solution. It's going to spread itself out and be completely dispersed. There we are, D23. The last thing to do is to make sure you've marked up a bottle to put the D23 in. I use these old orange juice bottles. They take a liter up to here, which is really cool. And they're PET, and PET is a very important plastic for us in the darkroom because it's not permeable to oxygen. So it can protect the chemistry from the air. So there we have it, making D23 without needing any scales. I can't wait to show you more of that developer in future videos. But now I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. I really appreciate it. It motivates me to make more of these videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do and like this video. It helps the algorithm with YouTube. It helps to get the news out there. Thank you, everybody, and goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.